Yu-Gi-Oh! is an amazing card game with tons of opportunities to create, mix, and explore different things. But it's also pretty expensive, and dudes don't really have the money for it right now. However, we've set out to do our own sealed-only challenge. Although, until we're actually able to buy the cards that we'll need, we'll have to settle with online services, honing and sharpening our skills until we're ready. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Unsealed. Alright, hello humans. Welcome to the first episode of Before Sealed. My name is not Nimhim, although this is inspired by Nimhim. However, similar to the intro, cards cost a lot of money and folks don't really have the money for it. So until those cards do come out, or until the money does actually start flowing in, we will be making our decks on using online services, um, thus testing out how, how, really how expansive and how, I guess, cohesive our decks can actually be. And then we're basically gonna choose from there and then move forward. Now, I already have the deck in mind, and even though I am looking at Dueling Nexus, that's not the website that we're gonna be using for today. Instead, we will be using everybody's favorite website dueling book other otherwise known as dueling network so let's log into that real quick let's see all oh, the nice little intro that they have and then necroz a brian act shows up along with grandmaster hanzo but we're not making a ninja deck here yes my name is dumb thumb also known as the artist with a fro uh this is the show and you guys are watching before sealed so let's go in let's see what we can do we're gonna go straight to deck constructor um, and surprisingly, slash unsurprisingly, you're going to see the most recent deck that I have on my YouTube channel. Again, be sure to check out all of my videos on artistswithfro.com slash YouTube. Uh, apologies for that. That was my mic hitting the other mic. <laughs> but yes, like I said before, you can check out all of the other decks that I have had. This is a Nordic slash Fortune Lady deck build that I was able to create. All of the builds that I have for this one are on the website. However, my Samorg deck is not on the website, and I've actually updated this. So it doesn't even look like this. But we're not looking at birds. We're not looking at fairies or ladies. We're making our own deck. Uh, I was going to choose between the uh, the Tenyis. However, when buying Rising Rampage, I bought a box and I actually got most of the Tenyi cards. So I don't want to have to like buy the same box and then get the same type of cards. So I figured, you know what? Let me actually start a new deck that I will have to make straight from scratch. Um, and we're going to take it straight from the next... Uh, set which I believe is ignition assault and it is going to be the Senka set now there is uh, There is a sort of theme with the Senka set they are based off of the romance of the three kingdoms otherwise known as dynasty warriors Characters romance of the three kingdoms of course is the book uh, Dynasty warriors is the Koei and Omega Force style games. So we're making a Senka style deck this is a primarily beast warrior deck uh, i believe and most of the cards have different attributes that allow them to do a multitude of things now i'm not exactly sure whether or not the mechanic is just to swarm but we can figure that out as we're playing along i have tried out some of the cards but i think we're just going to look at all of these cards individually and then see how much or how well we want to have each of them in our deck i'll put one of each just so that way we can read through most of these cards. Now, Senka Noble Liu Xuan. Now this says, while you control another Senka monster, your opponent cannot target this card for attacks. Okay, so he saves himself. You can only use each of the following effects of Senka Noble, Senka Noble, Senka Noble, Senka Noodle, Senka Noble uh, Liu Xuan once per turn. Uh, if your opponent controls more than more uh, more monsters than you do, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Special summon one Senka monster from your deck, except Senka Noble Liu Xuan. When an attack is declared involving your other Senka monster, you can draw one card. Okay, not bad. Senka Intermediary Sun Mo. While you control another Senka monster, your opponent. Oh, so they do they all have that effect? No, I think it's just I think it's just these two. That's interesting. So this one, I'm guessing with the name, it's based off of Liu Bei and Sun Mo. Would that be Sun Quan from the games? I'm guessing. I'm gonna guess that's Sun Quan. Um, but we'll go into the history. I would say more so when the actual cards come out. Um, 
I will kind of dabble into that a little bit as I am discussing some of the stuff, but uh, yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's just go with it. I find it's a it's an interesting mixture of both good fantasy, or rather good fictional fantasy, historical fantasy, along with the fact that these are actually Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, but let me get through all the cards first, and then we'll explain the actual historical facts or fiction of it. Um, so he has the same effect. I can only use it what his effects once per turn. I can send... Oh, he doesn't have the thing where it's like they have more monsters in me. So he's actually a little bit better. I can send one card from my hand to the graveyard, add one Senka. Oh, so he's a... Wait, he's like a... A Rhoda, in a sense? Send one card from my hand or field to the graveyard. Interesting. Add one Senka monster from my deck to my hand, except Senka Intermediary Sunmo. If, if your other Senka monster's effect is activated, you can target one monster... Your opponent controls and return it to the hand. Oh, that's actually really good. 18, he's a 14, 12, 18, 15. All right, not bad. Senka champion, Zhang Dei. Uh, I'm guessing that's Zhang Liao. Oh, uh, no, 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 not Zhang Liao. What was his, Zhang Fei. Zhang Fei was Lu, uh, Liu Bei's uh, sworn brother. But let's read what he says. So he gains 300 attack for each monster your opponent controls during your turn only. That kind of sucks, but you can only... Oh, okay, they all have that thing where you can only use their effects once per turn. So I'm going to guess that one of them will say, like, not that, <laughs> because I feel like that's kind of holding them back a bit. Let's see. If you control two or more Senka monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. And I can do that by using this guy to special summon one of these other ones from the deck. Is that what he said? I can summon from the deck? Wow, that's kind of broken. And does it say levels? What? If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. Special summon one Senka monster from your deck. Okay, so I could just special summon in. Let's read what else he says. Okay. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can activate this effect. This card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. Damn, they should have just took away that. Just said this card can make up to two attacks during each battle phase. I feel it would have been a lot, a little bit better. He's 27, so when he comes out, let's say you, you potentially, your opponent potentially has one monster. He's boosting straight up to 3,000. Not bad. He can fight on par with a with a blue eyes if he is summoned with. Oh no! What if your opponent controls more monsters? Right? No, no, no. Oh, never mind. No, he just gains the 300 on your turn. So he actually would be pretty good. Senka Adonis Zhou Gong. I'm guessing that's uh, Zhou Yu. If that's Sun Quan, that's definitely Zhou Yu. But let's see, what do we have? Uh, you can, one of the Wu strategists. It's interesting that they are water-based, though, but... I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna go into it. It's funny that, yeah, yeah, anyway, let's read the rest of this. So Zhou Yu uh, says you can target one continuous spell or trap card you control. There are three of them over here, which I'm guessing we're gonna use. Send it to the graveyard, and if you do, add one Senka spell or trap from your deck to your hand. If your other Senka monster's effect is activated, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effect until the end of the turn. You can only use... What? He can negate effects? Oh, if another Senka uses their effects. And then this other card switches out a, one of these for another one of these. Alright, that's interesting. And he has 8... 16. 16, 16, not bad. Alright, Guan Yu, Senka Justice. Guan Yu, or Guan Yun. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. So you kind of like a uh, Cyber Dragon or Pancratops. Your opponent cannot target other Senka monsters you control with card effects. Interesting. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can target one monster your opponent controls, destroy it. You can only use the effect of Senka Justice Guan Yun once per turn. That's actually pretty good. 2,500. He doesn't gain any extra attack, but... How much does Pancratops have, for that matter? 20... Oh, uh, that, that's about 100 more. That's kind of disappointing. But, let's go on. Senka Tactician, Lu Jing. Lu Jing. Would that be Lu... Hmm, I don't know which character that would be. Lu Jing. I'm blanking out. Help me out, guys, if you guys know. Let's say, you can target one continuous spell or trap card you control, send it to the graveyard, and if you do, add from your graveyard... To your hand one Senka spell and trap with a different name so he switches out one of these for one of these interesting uh, what else does he say 
if your other Senka monster's effect is activated, you can target one spell or trap card your opponent controls. So wait a sec, this dude had that effect too, and so did this dude. So I'm noticing that all three of these guys have the same if your other cards activate their effects, which is interesting because they would all be of the same army and all the same faction. So that's pretty cool. Um, and whereas these guys just say if your opponent controls more monsters than you do. So, oh, that's interesting. So that means that the third set, if I move these cards around, like, let's say let's let's say we align them. These these three have effects that trigger when your opponent has more cards than you do or more monsters than you do. These cards have effects that trigger when your other Senkum cards activate their own effects. So these cards in my opinion I think are a little bit better. Um, yes, it's always good. I mean I mean necessarily we're looking at what like these three are kind of like second going second really good effects but these effects kind of work better overall now let's see what else he says uh you can target one spell or trap your opponent controls and, oh okay and destroy 2000 defense not bad all right first ball card senka legend the sun liu alliance this is when sun Quan uh and liu bei were working together to fight the forces of Sao Tsao. Ah, now let's see. What does this say? If you control two or more Senka monsters with different attributes, so water and wind, right, that works out. <clears throat> you can declare one attribute. Monsters your opponent controls with that attribute cannot activate their effects until the end of this turn, even if this card leaves the field. Is that like a once per turn, or is that like a... If your opponent special summons a monster, or if you activate a Senka monster's effect, you can make all Senka monsters you currently control gain 300 attack for each senka monster you control what the fuck wait a sec yo this card is kind of broken wait a sec if your opponent special summons a monster or if you activate a senka monster's effect so that's like the combination of both of their effects right there it says you can make all senka monsters you currently control gain 300 attack for each senka you control damn that's broken <clears throat> And I apologize beforehand, I actually do have a cold, so if my voice does sound a little bit raspy, or if I am coughing throughout the video, that is your warning beforehand. Now it says, until the end of the turn, even if this card leaves the field, oh, I can only use that effect once per turn. Alright, not bad. Senka Legend, the Three Visit. This is probably referencing um, Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei visiting the house of Zhuge Liang. Um, the primary strategist for Shu, for the Shu forces in China. Uh, and they made three visits before he decided to join them. <clears throat> now let's see what this says. Send this card to the graveyard during your second standby phase after activation during your main phase. If you normal or special summon a Senka monster, you can target one of those monsters, add from your deck to your hand one Senka monster with a different name from that target. If this card is set from the spell and trap card zone to the graveyard, you can special summon one Senka monster from your hand. So if this card is sent, and he sends, and he sends, does he send as well? Yeah, and okay, so all three of them send it, okay. None of these guys send, does he send? I think Liu, I think Liu Bei does send it, right? You can send one card, okay, yeah, yeah. So you can double trigger, so you can like have him, let's say I have one of these two dudes in my hand, I send this to the graveyard, with his effect to then special summon another Senka card and then because it's been sent to the graveyard I can just special summon any Senka other monster from my hand that's pretty good what is it what else does it say and it gets destroyed or rather it gets sent to the graveyard during the second standby phase so you're gonna have something regardless if only it made them gain attack that actually be pretty good so this is like a cool searcher now what is this Senka legend champions bravery at Changban bridge if your opponent could mo if your if your Senka monster battles your battles, your opponent cannot activate spell and trap cards until the end of the damage step. You can only use one of the following effects during let's say, at the start of your opponent's battle phase. You can send this face up card from the spell and trap card zone to the graveyard. Your opponent's monsters cannot target Senka monsters. Oh, it's like a threatening roar. Interesting. And then what else does it say? It says when your opponent declares an attack, you can banish this card. To special summon one Senka monster from your deck. Oh, whoa, that's kind of broken. How do I get that in the graveyard, though? That's the part. That's what you got to figure out. How do you get this card in the graveyard? ASAP. Foolish Burial? No, Foolish Burial sends a monster, right? Yeah, there has to be some way to, like, send that to the grave. Um, all right, interesting. So, what are their... They're all Beast Warriors. So, Fire Fist, I'm guessing. Um, I'm going to just do a quick, like... 
speed through of uh, I guess a poly type of deck that I'm gonna make with them I kind of have a general idea of where I'm gonna go but I'm gonna guess that I can use Tenki and Tensu with them right when this card is activated level 4 lower beast warrior okay it's not attribute base which is good so that's going in uh, and I'm guessing Tensu is the card that I need to normal summon more than one of them and I can send them both to the graveyard with their two effects because they don't have to send and him they don't have to send other cards so I'm gonna do a quick like time lapse speed up we're gonna make our makeshift deck and we're gonna see what we can do in here and then we're gonna export it and bring it into uh, dueling network so that way we can actually play through or rather this will probably be the end of the, the video the first video the next time we come back we'll be doing it in dueling network uh, dueling Nexus sorry to see how well we can uh, play through this game so enjoy the music and I have a lot of work to do and we'll And we're back. Um, I think that this is pretty much what we're going to end on. I'm going to run through the deck itself, and then that's going to be the end, of course, of our first episode of Before Sealed. Uh, dudes ain't got money. <laughs> but let's run through what we got, right? Let's see. We're going to start off first with two Ash Blossoms, because Ash Blossom is always pretty good. Uh, out of all the danger cards I feel like can work best with this type of deck, Danger Dogman pretty much stands out. Uh, not only is he Beast Warrior, but his other effect is actually pretty good as well. Uh, we're going to run two Nibiru just because we're not going to take any chances, and I feel like a lot of people... Combo is still running rampant. We don't know what the new ban list is going to look like, so the probability of still running into Sky Striker is fairly high, so we're just going to keep that as is. Uh, we're going to run three of the Adonis Zhugong, the guy that can uh, send a spell card and then add another spell card, or rather spell a trap. Um, we're going to run two Zhang Days or Zhang Fei, uh, just because he has a fairly good effect and I feel like I can summon him a lot more consistently. Uh, we're going to run three of the Sun Mo's. I feel like all the level fours we kind of just maxed out. Um, he, so this one searches the spells, he searches the monsters. Um, along with the with the spell card that we're gonna use, I feel like this is a pretty good combo. I think I think that you probably want to start off with him in your hand more consistently than anything else. Uh, then we're gonna run two of Guan Yun. Uh, we already have enough high level monsters here. He kind of will serve as our Cyber Dragon, but I don't think that like I I would probably take one out and just switch him because I feel like he's kind of eh. I know there's other Senka cards that are going to show up, so we're just gonna see what happens after that. We're gonna run three Liu Shuans. Uh, again, he kind of just sends to, to special summon. We'd mainly just go for Sun Mo or, or Xu Gong. I feel like these three are, like, are the best right now. Uh, he can only pop if your opponent has more monsters than you do, so you are probably not gonna be using his effect as much as it says. Zhang Dei. We can probably, he's probably a bit more useful. That's why I'm kind of just like, yeah, I might take out one of these. And we're going to run one Lu Jing just for the fact, excuse me. <coughs> just because you never know. He might, <coughs> he might be able to help us out in the end. But as of right now, we're not really able to tell. We're going to run three Tankies. That's our, uh, that's our Rota. If you don't know what Rota does, it's basically a searcher. You'll give me any of these other Beast Warriors with the exception of the high level ones. Tensu will allow me to summon more than one of them, so let's say I get like a field of like a few of these. And the good part is, is that like he can just special summon himself, so I can just special the normal than normal, which will actually help us uh, in the long run. Monster Reborn, self-explanatory, Pot of Desire, self-explanatory, Raigeki. We're going to run one of these for now. I think I might take it out, but we'll see. We're gonna run one Senka Legend, and that's about it. We're running three of the uh, the three visits. I feel like this card's kind of gonna be a dead draw. I'm gonna be real with you. I really feel like this card's gonna be a dead draw, and I think I could switch it out with something a little bit more useful. But that's besides the point. We're running three of the three visits because that's kind of like the best card in the deck right now. Um, I probably you know what? Yeah, never mind. I'll think about it. Uh, and then we're running two Twin Twisters. 
too evenly matched, which I think out of all of these cards, because Nibiru you can get fairly easy, Dogman might be hard to find, Ash is ridiculously easy to get now, and I don't know what the what the pull rate is for any of these, but I think out of all of these, Pot of Desires and Evenly Matched are going to be the hardest cards that we're going to get, so switching these out for Infinite and Permanence, you never know, however, and I'm going to say this with my fingers crossed, quote this part of the video right now, I do think that there's going to be a set that's going to come out that's either going to have infinite impermanence in it, like a box set that's either going to have infinite impermanence or evenly matched by next year. And you can quote me on that or not. I feel like they would do it with impermanence before they do it with evenly matched because they don't want to have too many people with this card, but impermanence is kind of eh. Royal Decree might also just be hard to find just because it's old, uh, but that's kind of about it. I don't know what set Kawaki Meru's come in, but this is the side deck. I'm just, I was like, I know there are two Beast Warrior Kawaki Meru's. He has two stacks of attack points. So even with Tenki and Tensu, he's at least 22. That's enough for me to run over Inspector Border if I ever have to. Um, I'm keeping this here, but I, like I said, we might switch that out for this. Just because I feel like the trap card might be a little bit more useful, even though it is a trap. Ra Sphere Mode, if Nibiru doesn't work out, we got, we got our alternative. Uh, I was thinking about three, to three trolling trolls, but I don't think I'm going to run any synchros for now. So unless I decide to do that otherwise, we're just going to leave him there. Uh, for the extra deck, though, we are running Brotherhood Tiger King. We're going to run one Castell, one uh, Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy. You know, you never know. That extra 800. Um, we're going to run two Silent Honor Arcs because everybody loves the Special Summon. But you know what I am going to add to this? I'm going to add Crazy Box, just because. Because uh, I'm crazy. We're going to add one Utopia, Time Thief, Time, bleh, time thief Redoer. Uh, aside from that, we're going to run Boral Sword, you know, the easy, no no thinking way to win the game. Uh, two Firefighting Daruma Dolls. Anybody that's seen my Cymorg or Cymorg deck knows how well this card works with them. Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix, and of course, number 85, Crazy Box. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for our first episode of Before Sealed, or, you know, uh, you know, still in the box. I don't know what the hell we're going to call it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys all for watching. I know that the set is going to come out around the end of January, so that's when the actual sealed-only adventure will start. But until then... Uh, be sure to tune in every Friday for an episode like this. I'm, th I'm saying every Friday. I've recorded this on Friday. I'm probably going to upload it on Monday. So be sure to tune in every Monday for an episode similar to this. Uh, going over our sealed only journey as we get closer to hopefully achieving our goal of winning either a Nationals or a League, etc. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. I've been the Artist with the Fro. That, my friends, is the show. And I will catch you all on the next one. Take care.